In the previous video, we did box counting and a log log plot to find the dimension of a square. Things worked out pretty nicely. As a reminder of what we did, we're working with this equation. n is c 1 over s to the d. d is a box counting dimension. We can take the logarithm of this equation, simplify a little bit, and come up with this. And this is the thing that we plot, and we would expect to see a straight line. This is the equation for a line, and the slope is minus d. So we did that for a square, and sure enough, we got a beautifully straight line. We could have plotted many more points. It would have been beautifully straight. And we can calculate the slope, and we get to. But alas, the world is more complicated than just squares, and so box counting and log log plots um, are a bit trickier, have a number of subtleties and challenges associated with them. I'm going to illustrate this with two examples. And the first is what happens if I do box counting on a circle? So here I um, had a program do it for me. So rather than actually count the boxes with my fingers, which becomes impractical, particularly since I want the boxes to get really, really tiny, I had a program um, do this. And here is the result. So I had the uh, program consider boxes with a size of a half, I think down to 0 0.0002, so a very big range of um, box sizes. Large boxes are here, small boxes are down here. And so we're interested in what happens up here in this portion of the graph. That's um, the small s limit. Small uh, s is getting really close to zero, and that's where we expect um, these equations to be true. Notice down here, we can see a deviation from linearity, and that's because the boxes are really large here. They're very inefficient coverings. Lots of the boxes hang over the circle. Um, so there's sort of a lot of sloppiness here. And, we, and as I've argued before, we wouldn't expect to see a linear relationship because that equation doesn't hold for large s. And indeed, that's what we're seeing. However, if we just took all the data and did a linear fit to it using some fitting package, one would get a dimension of 1.85, which is pretty disappointing. We would expect a dimension of 2. A circle is two-dimensional. So what we want to do is ignore a bunch of this data, again, because we're interested in the small s limit. So we're certainly justified in throwing out some of this data. And if I do that, if I just plot um, this data, then I get a dimension that's much better, 1.98. Presumably, if I went smaller s still, I would get closer and closer to 2. So this is pretty good. I can live with this. Um, numerically estimating 1.98 when we're expecting 2, that seems all right. Here, numerically estimating 1.85 when we expect 2 is pretty disappointing. But notice here that I can, uh, I'm benefiting from the fact that I know what the answer should be ahead of time. So that's sort of cheating. Often when we're doing science and we're measuring something, we don't know the answer before, that, uh, before we measure it. That's why we're measuring it. Um, so the question then is, how should I decide which data points to keep and which to get rid of? Um, in general, you want to keep as many data points as possible because that'll give you a better fit. More data is going to give you a better fit most of the time. But not if there's some systematic deviations from the linear behavior we see over here. And so it's not always obvious where one should um, draw the line, almost literally. Um, very often one just sort of arbitrarily throws out a third or a half of the points and <clears throat> then fits. Uh, that seems unsatisfactory, uh, maybe not very scientific or objective or principled. Um, I would agree. Um, often one can get away with it. Um, but we'll talk in the next unit about some more principled ways of deciding over what range we should um, consider something to be um, linear like this. All right, so that's the situation for a circle. Now let's consider something um, even a little a little bit trickier, so uh, diffusion limited aggregation. So here's a DLA cluster, something that's grown around a seed here 
and the particles do random walks, and when they um, hit the middle or the cluster, they, they stick. And so we've seen before in the previous unit, these make these attractive dendritic patterns. So what if we wanted to calculate the dimension of this? Oh, and I should mention this isn't um, um, my own work. This is work um, from uh, a, a MATLAB uh, demonstration. I'll put the, uh, the full citation down here. Okay, so what if we did box counting with this? Well, we would get something that looks like this. So this is a really common situation. Again, our goal in this is to figure out the slope of this line. And uh, it looks pretty linear in here. This point maybe is a little bit of a deviation from linear. Let me see if I have a ruler to illustrate that. All right, here it is. Sorry about that. So there's maybe a pretty nice linear region in here. This point is a little bit off from linear. Again, maybe because the boxes are too big. But now notice that the problem is in the small s limit. Um, this author used r instead of s, but it's the same idea. So the box sizes are getting smaller here. So what's this about? Well, if you get the box sizes to be um, smaller, uh, still, in other words, like smaller than the resolution of this picture itself, um, at some point you're going to have the boxes so small um, that you have a, a point. Every point is in its own box. So um, at making the boxes smaller isn't going to make uh, the number of boxes needed to cover the shape any larger because you are basically running out of points. So we're interested in what happens when S gets small, but we can't let S get smaller than the resolution of the image itself, or we're going to see this start to flatten out in this direction. So um, this isn't meant to be a critique of, of this work. You can only do what you can do. This is a really standard situation. And so then we're left with a question, all right, well, how do we estimate this slope? Do we probably want to get rid of, don't count those two points. Maybe we don't count those points. But then maybe one could make a case for getting rid of this point, too, because this point does seem to be sort of deviating from linear. On the other hand, I'd like to keep this point, because it's a point with small s, and small s is the behavior that we're interested in. So the point I'm trying to make is the process of making these log-log plots is pretty straightforward. It's tedious to do by hand. You can have a machine do it. You plot it, and you look to see if it's a line. But then interpreting that line can often be tricky because it deviates from linearity often at both ends. And it's particularly vexing when that happens here at the small s, the small box end of the graph, because that's exactly where we're interested in. But the simple fact is that you can't have boxes have a smaller resolution, or it's not meaningful to have boxes have a smaller resolution than the um, photo or image you're working with. So there's always going to be some sort of a cutoff. So what to do? As I said, in the next unit, uh, when we talk about power laws, or might be the unit after that, we'll talk about some more principled ways to figure out um, what the linear region is. And so we're not just throwing away points because we feel like it. For now, I guess what I want to say, or what I want to leave you with, is that um, actually getting a precise estimate from a box counting dimension in most realistic situations is hard. There's going to be some decision about what to get rid of on these limits, and that implicitly gives some pretty large error bars. So what I would think to do might be to try um, a couple of different ways, and then maybe average over those. Um, but in any event, overly precise box counting dimensions I'm always suspicious of, because my experience has been that it's pretty hard to pin them down exactly, unless they're just willing to completely throw out some data, but without maybe some justification. One other issue that comes up in um, box counting that I want to mention briefly is 
that when I'm laying a grid down on a circle or some blob like this, I have a choice about exactly where I place that grid. And, de and depending on the exact placement, I might have a larger or a smaller number of boxes. So that's another source of error. If one really wanted to get um, a good estimate for the dimension and some error bars, some uncertainty with it, one thing to do is to try a bunch of different box placements and maybe uh, then use use all of those and then that can give you an error bar when you go to um, you can get error bars in each of these points that you can get a range here and then you can use that to get some sort of um, range or error bars on this in any event again the moral of the story is that box counting is a simple idea um, and a nice clean conceptual idea I think but in practice can be difficult to get um, too, uh, too exact uh, to get a very exact number um, out of it.